history made today. Former President Donald Trump pleading not guilty to charges stemming from hush money, hush money payments made during the 2016 presidential campaign. And let's take a live look right now outside that courthouse in Manhattan. As you can see, protesters are still gathered outside at this hour. And of course, this is now hours after today's arraignment. The former president now making his way back to Florida to his Mar-a-Lago estate where he is scheduled to give evening remarks. Let's get right over to our chief legal correspondent, Katie Barlow, with a recap of what happened today. Katie? Well, former President Donald Trump reported to the Manhattan courthouse today and pleaded not guilty to a 34-count indictment for cooking the books. The indictment lists 34 counts of falsifying business records in the first degree. That's a felony in New York if you can show that someone falsified a business record in order to conceal another crime. A separate statement of facts lays out a narrative claiming that Trump and others hid damaging information from the voting public during the 2016 presidential election. Prosecutors allege Trump orchestrated a catch-and-kill scheme to buy and then bury negative stories about him to influence the election. They reference not only the $130,000 payment to Stormy Daniels, but also a $30,000 payment directed by National Enquirer Chief David Pecker to a doorman with a, stormy, with a story about Trump fathering a child out of wedlock, as well as a $150,000 payment to Playboy model Karen McDougal. It's not just about one payment. Uh, it is 34 business records, uh, 34 false statements in business records, and we're concealing criminal conduct. Um, and uh, the earlier question about New York State election law, when I talked about conspiracy uh, to, to promote a candidacy by unlawful means. Now, when pushed on what additional crime Trump was allegedly trying to conceal in order to make each of these 34 charges a felony, D.A. Bragg suggested that payments violated New York state election law in addition to exceeding federal campaign contribution caps. Now, there was also discussion today about Trump's recent Truth Social posts, including negative comments about Judge Juan Mershon overseeing today's hearing and Mershon's family members. He is not going after the judge. He commented that he thought that there were some issues that may cause a conflict. That's not going after the judge. He is not threatening he's the judge. He's not going after the right, judge. Right, he's going after the he DA. He has said that the DA, he is angry because the DA has brought a case that is unjustified. The next hearing in the case is scheduled for December 4th. In the meantime, prosecutors will be required to hand over evidence that is helpful to Trump's defense in the coming days. Back to you guys. All right, Katie Barlow in the newsroom for us tonight. Katie, thank you very much. All right, we're continuing our coverage here of Mr. Trump's arraignment as we look ahead at what happens next. Let's bring in attorney A. Scott Bolden. He's joining us live once again here on Fox 5. We've heard a lot from you the last couple of days, but building up to it was just speculation. Now we have the indictment. Was there anything that surprised you that came out of that court? room today. <clears throat> well, you're right. I've been saying for the last week with you all and others that this indictment was going to go beyond Stormy Daniels or uh, Karen McDougal. Uh, I was underwhelmed by the indictment because those 34 business entries where were falsifying business records focused on those two individuals. And um, it, it, it really gives the GOP fodder to say this is politically motivated. The business fraud or the financial fraud or conspiracy claims that I thought would be in the indictment would have taken it away from those type of political attacks. I think Alvin Bragg has got to live with this indictment now and argue that as a public policy, um, uh, falsifying business records to cover up a crime is really, really important and isn't about Stormy Daniels or Karen McDougal. It's about the bad conduct of uh, Donald Trump. Nevertheless, uh, I really do think that the, the indictment itself was underwhelming and could have political implications in the presidential race, whether it's for the Dems or for the Republicans. Uh, these cha charges carry the component of intent. How difficult is that to do before a jury to prove that there was intent, to prove that someone was thinking these things? Yeah, you know, uh, the chief witness is Cohen, his lawyer. He's a convicted perjurer. And so as a result, you've got to corroborate his story. Hopefully they have the documents and other witnesses to corroborate that story. Um, but the reality is, is that um, he's got to live with these, these claims. And Donald Trump's defense in this case is going to be, 
I did all these things, not because I had the criminal intent to defraud the public or to violate the federal election commission laws or campaign finance laws in New York, but it was to perfect, protect my family. It was to protect people around me. It was to protect the company so I didn't have the criminal intent. Credibility would be really important. I don't think Donald Trump's going to take the stand. But if the government, I'm sorry, if the jury believes what Donald Trump's defense will be, then uh, he can he be found not guilty. If they don't, he'll probably be found guilty. But we're, we're a long way from that mm -hmm. part. All right, Attorney A. Scott Bolden joining us live here on Fox 5. Again, not the last time we'll be talking with you uh, about this <laughs> case. And who knows what else may come down the pipeline. First of its kind. Yeah, no <laughs> doubt.